everybody welcome back to our online series called make do and today we're going to be making one of our favorite toys um, this toy has been around for at least a century uh, traditionally it was made with the lid of a tin can uh, but we're gonna use cardboard for this one and this is a sawmill uh, and it works like this So let's get started. So what you're gonna need for this project is a scrap of cardboard. Uh, these are all optional, there's other ways to do it. Um, a push pin, some string, it doesn't really matter what string you use, so if you have yarn around, that's fine too. You're gonna need scissors, a pencil, optional ruler, and then uh, markers, temper sticks, or paint, whatever you have around. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a circle on our piece of cardboard. And I just wanna show you a cool way to do this if you don't have a compass or a traceable circle. Uh, it's just kind of fun. So you're gonna take a little length of string. You're gonna tie it over, around, and through. Oops. You're gonna tie it around the push pin getting it as secure as you can. Okay. The push pin is gonna go in the center of your board, and I'm gonna push it into the table, but I don't suggest doing that at home since you don't have, unless you have a craft table. I'm gonna figure out how big I want my circle, the radius, uh, and then I'm going to tie my other bit of string around my pencil. where you wanna try and get it nice and tight, otherwise your circle will end up a funky shape. Okay. So once you have that on, what you're gonna do is just figure out an angle. You can go straight up and down, you can go to the side. You just wanna make sure you pull it the same all the way around. I'm gonna make sure my pin is nice and tight and then I'm going to use this. Oops. To create my circle. You might have to go around a couple times just to get the hang of it. Does it have to be perfect? Nope. Okay. So once you have your circle, you're going to take that pin out and put it to the side because you're going to use it again later. See, mine's not perfect, but it works. Uh, and then I'm going to cut it out. Remember, cardboard can be kind of tricky to cut. So again, just open the scissors as wide as you can and chop from the back side. The original sawmills would have had um, sort of a jagged edge because the idea was that you could actually create one that would actually saw through wood with the motion. Uh, so feel free to do that as well. Let's make one kind of old school. So I'm just gonna take little triangle chunks out of I saw so many cool rag rugs from our first project that I published. And I'm so excited to see all of the work that you're doing at home. All this cool reusable stuff. Save all these little triangles for another craft project if you want to. It'd be kind of fun. This one's very funky. I like it. I'm going around. I'm almost done. Make sure you pull all these guys out.
like a saw blade. I'm getting there. All right, the next thing that you're gonna do is you're just gonna take some time to decorate both sides of your sawmill. Uh, on my original one, um, I created this pinwheel effect because then when you spin it, the colors kind of combine together and that's a really interesting effect. And I'll show you how to do that. So if you have any tape around, you're gonna use that in just a second. I'm gonna use that pin uh, hole in the middle to divide up my pinwheel into eighths, just like a pizza. So two lines make four, two more lines make eights. So now what you can do to make that really nice clean pinwheel is just take a little bit of tape and this is called masking and I'm just going to make one of, I'm gonna mask off one of my sections, one of my eighths to color in. And I just so happen to have these cool temper sticks, but like I said, you can use markers or paint or anything like that. So I'm just gonna use marker. takes off some of your cardboard you can just repair later okay and then I'm gonna take that tape I'm not gonna push the tape down too hard because I don't want it to stick to the cardboard um, use blue you could do two complementary colors as well um, and see if when you spin do they make a secondary color so the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Um, and when you combine two of those colors, you get a secondary color, like green. Uh, yellow and blue makes green. This one will be cool though. Oh, my marker's running out. Do you know what I do when my markers run out? I save the caps for a later tinker project because those are useful. They can make little jet packs, all sorts of cool stuff. And then I just go toss the marker. Just keep moving along. something really fun about making patterns. a good idea if you're working at your dining room table or at your desk and you don't have a messy workspace like I do um, to just put down some paper or an extra sheet of cardboard uh, while you work so you don't have to worry about getting marker or paint on the table. It makes cleanup easier as well. You could always just keep like, a piece of cardboard next to your table and just toss that on anytime you're ready to work. And you don't have to worry about it too much. to do on the other side now so we have this pinwheel shape maybe we could do let's do primary colors but let's do a spiral and then we'll see what happens so let's use yellow and red and I bet a lot of you can guess what color this makes when you're all done but we'll see 
So I'm going to go from the center and I'm just going to make a wide spiral of one color. And I'm going to go back in later and fill in with the second color. First spiral. Not that bad. Go for red. the internet or look for old books that have information about how kids used to play and used to make their own toys because if you think about it you know most for the longest time there was no toy stores there was no Amazon there was no Lego section at Target and kids and adults had to be resourceful about what they used to play um, and a lot of the toys that kids played with were something that they could make themselves, something that was just out of materials that they found around uh, where they lived. And that's just what you're doing right now. And that is a really cool skill to have. Okay. Spiral. Okay, so once you've gotten it all colored, and you feel like you're ready to go, and you could spend a long time doing this, um, it's really up to you. We're going to poke two holes and we're gonna thread our string through, and then we'll be ready to play. So you wanna find that center point again, and then about a half inch, and you can measure if you want to, um, on either side, of your sawmill, you're gonna poke two holes. You can use the pin, and again, if you didn't have a pin, you could just use your scissors, just be careful. And you really just want those holes big enough that you can feed the string through. So I'm just gonna make sure my hand's out of the way. Use my scissor to make my holes a little bit bigger. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a piece of string and I'm gonna get, start with like a wingspan that's as far as your fingertip to fingertip which surprisingly is about how tall you are okay. uh, to feed it through I like to fold the string in half it just makes it a little bit easier you're gonna go through one hole like a giant button and you're gonna feed your string through the other side sometimes if that cardboard's poking out one direction you kind of got to through again to get the string through. Okay. And then I'm going to tie a knot. So this knot goes, I flipped it, it goes over, around the back, and through the middle. And you just want to make sure it's nice and tight. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to take your sawmill in your hands and you're going to swing it around and see how, oh, so you can get it going. Sometimes it's a little tricky at first. You just got to play with it. You're going to get that. There we go. 
sometimes things don't go exactly the way we plan, but we just have to practice. There we go. You see? Let's see if we can make it go orange. Good times. All right. So I can't wait to see your finished projects. Take a video because this one's way better in motion. Uh, you can email it to me at Delaney at Class and an Apprentice, or you can post it to Instagram and tag us in it or send us a direct message there. I can't wait to make with you again soon and check out our other videos.